Welcome back to the show, Denver Broncos Blitz, brought to you by 5280sportsnetwork.com. Jake Marsing, Ryan Green, joining us right now on the hotline, none other than the Broncos Ring of Famer, soon to be Pro Football Hall of Famer, Terrell Davis. TD, I know you have been introduced that way uh, probably thousands of times by now, but is it is it getting old yet? Have you gotten over that quite yet? Uh, absolutely not. And I mean, from what I was told, I'm a Hall of Famer right now. So it just is that uh, it. You're a Hall of Famer right now. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a Hall of Famer right now, man. The, the enshrinement hasn't happened, but when I uh, when they introduced me at the uh, the NFL Honors, I said, man, is there anything that I can do at this point that will get this thing taken away from me? And it was like, nope, <laughs> it is done, it's done deal. So, so to me, when they said that, I said it's official. They 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 feel officially crowned me. A Hall of Famer, so um, man, it feels nice, man. It does. It feels great. And uh, yes, the introductions. Um, no, they don't get old, um, and I don't think they ever will get old. So I'm enjoying it, having a great time, looking forward to the process and the uh, the road to enshrinement. Uh, it's been crazy and busy so far, but uh, the family's loving it, and I'm loving it. TD, I would imagine that because you had to wait so long, and I'm kind of a guy who likes to study the Hall of Fame, and studying your case was so interesting because when you first became eligible, I don't think there was a lot of momentum for you. And then as time went on, your case continued to be talked about, and you continued to be talked about, and you grew more and more and more momentum. So I have to imagine that waiting so long, waiting a, a decade, basically, was it 10 or 11 years that you had to wait just made it that much more sweet when you get that knock on your door from David Baker. Yeah, it seems like I can't do anything to uh, make it easy, man. It's, uh, it was complicated, and I felt the same way you felt over probably the last probably the last five to six years that I started to see a shift in sort of the uh, the support for me being at this point. So, um, yeah, I, I think the, the longer that I wait, I, I guess... The, I would say this. Let me go back. So I would say the first year I was eligible, and then I made the semifinalist list. You know, I was like, okay, that's cool. I was happy and excited about that. And then, you know, I found myself on that list again the second year. And of course, you're excited about it. But um, about the fourth or fifth year, you start to realize that, man, you know, I keep making it to the semifinalist, but I don't get any, any further than that. And so you start to get a little discouraged. Like, okay, this is probably where I'm going to be for for a while. Um, and so I just kind of really lost a little, a little hope or faith that it would ever happen. Uh, especially like you just said, there was, there wasn't a whole lot of momentum or talk about it. It was just kind of a, you know, they'll talk about the other players and then they might put me at the bottom, uh, sort of like a footnote somewhere. But, um, I, I just felt like, Hey, you know, the last three years I started to see a shift and, uh, especially when I made the finals, you know, that, that's when I got a little, a little bit more recharged and, I was like, wow, man, like, yeah, okay, we're not just stuck on uh, uh, semi-finalists. So we, we finally made it to the finalists, and um, I just started to see more people talk about it. I saw more people uh, voice their opinions about me going in, and so I felt a little bit more encouraged that it would happen. I just didn't know when it would happen, and so I became patient and, you know, still excited every time uh, they would announce the finalists, and, uh, you know, my attitude was great ever since then, and, and this year was unique because I thought that um, you know, I thought everything was sort of pointing for me to get in, but um, just like you, I studied it the last couple of years, but then LT was in the class. So every time oh, I would right. come to the conclusion that, hey, you know what, it looks good this year, too, but uh, LT is in the same class, and I just don't think they'll put two running backs, especially two guys, you know, one guy being a first ballot and me being sort of like a, sp- a special circumstance guy. So, um, you know, obviously I was a little shocked when it happened, but uh, but please. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, TD, I, I know this is your first year being an inductee, but I assume it's not your first time you've been around the Hall of Fame during the Hall of Fame week, um, you know, with NFL Network or possibly just hanging out. Uh, what have you seen uh, from other players getting inducted during that week and what festivities are you just happy to be a part of and you're looking forward to uh, being a part of that week that uh, I, I mean, I know I'm sure you're. Uh, getting your speech ready and all that stuff. But what are some, uh, you know, just festivities that you're happy that you're a part of finally? Um, I, I mean, let's, let me go back. So, um, I guess last, I've been there twice. I've been there when John went in, um, whatever year that was. Oh, four, I think. Yeah. Oh, four. Oh, four. Yeah. Yeah. So I was there 
and I was working for the network at the time, NFL Network, and I didn't go inside the hall. Uh, I just stayed outside, and I saw everything from the outside, and I didn't go in. And then I also went back when Shannon went in, and this time I was like, you know what, if I'm going back, I want to see everything. So I went inside the exhibit and saw, you know, I went inside the room where all the buffs were in and, uh, you know, got a chance to, to take all that in. And so, um, you know, that was, that was pretty cool seeing that. Um, now as far as me going in this time, I think I'm just excited about, um, you know, obviously the, the jacket ceremony, uh, which is on Friday, I believe. And then they have the actual, um, you know, ceremony, which is on Saturday. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I was looking forward, forward to the parties, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to having, Friends, family, and uh, a lot of people who mean the world to me around me, my teammates. And so I think it's just going to be a, a fantastic weekend. Uh, like I said, it's been great leading up to that point. It's going to be great leading up to that point because uh, all the things that I that I get to do, you know, going back to my high school, going back to Georgia. But it's like I'll be going back to Long Beach State where I started. <laughs> um, so obviously going back to Denver, uh, doing the game. So, man, it's just so much, so much to do. And one guy that kind of helped me, actually two guys who's helped me along the whole time was, uh, was Andre Reed and Tim Brown. You know, I stayed in contact with them a long time. And I remember Tim coming up to me when he went in and he says, man, he's like, listen, dude, he's like, uh, just be patient, my brother, be patient. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, okay, I'll be patient. So, you know, we'll talk every once in a while, I'll text and he'll, uh, you know, when I managed to make it the last couple of years, he'll text, hey, man, keep your head up. And it's going to happen. You just got to be patient. Trust me. And, you know, so um, it's been good to hear that from him, and uh, I actually saw him again after it happened because we have the uh, we have sort of the you go through the orientation, and he spoke at that, and we had a chance to talk again. So the guys, man, it's, it's just a lot of great guys that are in the hall as well, and so I, I look forward to uh, the bridging those relationships, man, and being part of that club. Right. So now that you're in. Uh, who's a player that you're rooting for to get in? Maybe someone that was in your position that was just waiting and waiting and you think should get in. There's so many players, so many of them. But I'd say the, the one that, I, that I, I'm probably pulling for next, and I really hope he gets in. I'd see that one, man. You know, I've played with him, and obviously I just think he should have been in a long time ago. And we got to get some momentum behind him because he didn't make the finals this year. Um, and I think he's made the finals maybe, uh, maybe twice. So it's, it seems like, man, if you're not out there, if you're not in the public eye and you don't make a fuss about it, man, it's, it's, it's tough because it becomes a game of popularity after a while. You know, if you just disappear and you're sort of a, a guy that's kind of on, on the fringe, you've got to make yourself visible. And so Steve hasn't been visible, but I, I certainly hope that they look at his career and say that it's worthy of being a Hall of Famer. TD, you know, we've talked a lot about the Hall of Fame, and I think everybody in their career who gets inducted, you can ask them, what, what's the moment for you that you think kind of personifies your Hall of Fame career? I think for you, everybody looks back on Super Bowl Thirty Two, the migraine, playing through that, getting the MVP. When you look back on your career, what's the moment that you say, you know what, that's probably the moment I became a Hall of Famer right there? I don't, you know, it's tough for me because, again, I have a short career, and I needed every single moment that I that I had in order to get to this point, you know, it wasn't like it was a 15 year career where it was just that that pinnacle, um, you know, where where, where it's like uh, you know you look back and say that was it. I don't know, man. I I mean, maybe the Super Bowls. I guess you can say both the Super Bowls were something that that I, I would imagine that kind of you know, put it over the top. And obviously, the playoff numbers are, are pretty good. Um, you know, playing with all the the, the migraine headaches like you mentioned and. Um, you know, playing, I played with a lot of injuries, torn, part of in my ribs. And, um, you know, again, playing for those migraines were tough. So I don't know, man. I, I just, I just hope that, you know, when I, I guess what I'm proud of is that I felt like when I played that I left everything out there. And I think my teammates, you know, I, I, I hope that they felt like when I, when I was out there that I had their back, yeah. you know, and so, um, you know, the, 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 the best thing a, a teammate can do is be accountable. And be there for the guys when they need them. And so I, that was my goal, man. Just be there for them. Like when they needed me, he needed to show up. And I, I felt like I did that. So I'm, I'm proud of that. TD, last one, and then we'll let you go. Uh, we've talked a lot on this show, and it's kind of the talk of, of, of Denver sports right now is 
the Denver Broncos, this Broncos team, I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you as a guy who has won championships, a guy who's seen what that takes. What do you think of this Broncos team as it sits right now? What do they have to do to get to the to that championship level again? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the the obvious thing is they've got to get a better offense. Um, you know, I think the the formula they used in 2015 was a unique one. They, uh, you know, the offense was decent. And it, it showed up in certain games, and you, but you had Peyton, um, you know, who still was there, kind of with that leadership. It, you just offensively, man, for whatever reason, it just didn't click. Uh, offensive line didn't gel last year, uh, didn't run the ball particularly well last year. Quarterback play was was not up to par last year. So uh, those things have to be focused on. And if they don't get better offensive production, then I, I'm not sure how you expect to uh, to be in that big game. So. Those are things that Vance is going to have to deal with. Uh, I don't think they're, they're major overhaul fixes, but uh, improving those areas defensively, I think they're going to be uh, like they were last year, pretty, still pretty good. So no, no issues there. They, they have core pieces that are in place, but and, and it's tough to repeat. It's tough yeah. to be, be a champion and uh, have to defend that. So uh, you, they, they got a taste of that last year. Do you think C.J. Anderson is one of those core pieces for them? He was, man. See, he went, when he went down, obviously Booker tried to come in and fill it, but, uh, you know, CJ is CJ for a reason. And they, you know, paid him a nice contract to bring him back because they felt like, you know, his, his skill sets, his, his leadership, his, the tough running ability to guide them. He's a closer. And, uh, over the last couple of years, man, late in the season, he, he's been there. He showed up big. So that certainly helped hurt them last year. Yeah. Uh, get him back healthy would, would certainly help that. All right, T.D. Hey, we cannot thank you enough for your time, and congratulations once again. Pro Football Hall of Famer Terrell Davis. Thanks so much for hopping on with us for a little bit of your time, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, guys.